In today's episode, we are talking all about what else? Avengers Endgame. Uh, we're, yeah, we're going to have some not spoilery bits at the beginning and some very spoilery bits near the end. And in the middle, we're going to call our moms and see how many Avengers they can name. I bet my mom names them all. All of them. Just all 500. There's 500 Avengers. There was a lot of people. Oh. Spoilers, not little. Bye. Tom DeLong and Will Ferrell's impression of Robert Goulet. What else you want to throw in there? Want to do some Adam Sandler fart jokes? I'm 50. Is that how old That's he Molly is? Shannon. Oh, from SNL. Now we're just going down that rabbit yeah. hole. Pull it out. Pull it out. Pull it up. Pull it up. We should probably talk about something <coughs> more topical. What do you want to talk about? What'd you do this weekend? Uh, this It's Sunday. So yeah. this weekend's not over. Yesterday, I spent uh, 12 hours in a movie theater. 12 hours? That's, it just felt long. Oh, because I was there for seeing Avengers Endgame. Bup, 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 bup. Let's talk about it. <laughs> this is the theme. To what? Endgame. This is not. This is a Marvel. Yeah, but they weren't even in this movie. I, I, I closed my eyes for like halfway through and I imagined that they were. I saw like Cyclops <laughs> flipping around. They were the, the prequels for the movie were. The Dark Phoenixes. Oh my gosh. That's I had to true. see two Dark Phoenix trailers before this movie. That doesn't make any sense. No. Why? I don't know. They showed one and they were like, another is helpful for you to see the movie. They didn't show you two in a row, did they? Yes. That is the it crazy. It was two different Dark Phoenix trailers back to back. That's so. And they like led into it with like a special treat for IMAX viewers. Here's a look at Dark Phoenix. And it was just a trailer. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh. And then it like. The next trailer pops up, and it's another better Dark Phoenix trailer. Why didn't they just show the the better one? I don't know because like the first one was very bad, and the second one was still bad but better. We're gonna get into Endgame and get into the whole thing. I just have a sw I have a sweet question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's gonna be no, real sweet. Yeah, build that up. Um, do, does Fox make money on this movie? Even though the transaction through Fox doesn't Disney make any money, but anymore, but. Yeah. So during this like selling of whatever billion dollars, there wasn't this person being like, hey, remember Dark Phoenix? We don't get any of that money. No, I think that all goes to Disney now. Good job, Disney. Going to get like 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to see that. Yeah. Avengers Endgame makes $1.2 billion. Dark Phoenix also exists. <laughs> God, it was pretty bad. So uh, we went and saw Endgame this weekend-ish. We did. Is of course we did. Every single human did. Is Thursday considered the weekend now? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. It's so part of the, I don't have to go to I, work. I bet if you ask them the money they made, they include Thursday's money. I mean, I would too. But so you're saying Thursday and Friday are considered the weekend so I can just sleep in my bed? You got a three-day work week, buddy. Sweet, dude. I love it. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Suck it. It's Monday through Wednesday. You're not getting paid those other days. So now I'm not oh. paying my bills. Shoot. Well, well, at least I can go to movies. At least you can go to all the movies or just one movie over and over again. Oh, my God. I think we need to talk about this. So we should probably set the stage on what we're going to be doing on this episode, because this episode is solely focused on Avengers. Avengers right? and, and movie going and the movie going experience. Yeah. I, we, well, because it's very fresh in our minds. We just went to the theater. Yes. We just did this. We saw Avengers Endgame. We both saw it this weekend. Mm -hmm. And we have some feelings that we'll get into. We'll oh. talk about that later. Maybe more spoilery at the end. At the end. Yeah. We're, we're not we're gonna avoid spoilers for now. We will give you a very clear signal of when we're gonna start talking about spoilers. What should be our signal? Should it be like the word spoilers ahead? Or should it be that like seems helpful? Or should it be like <laughs> Thanos's butt? It's like a little Thanos butt. But what if we want to talk about Thanos's butt before that? Oh, that's true. W okay, so we could do Mm. What if I we think spoilers is a good one? What if it was just like like a little raccoon? Like a little raccoon that Oh, on screen? Yeah, and he just like pops up and it's like once you see the raccoon, spoiler. What if they're not watching this? What if they're just listening? They're not gonna hear oh, that that's raccoon. That's true. What if while we talk, I constantly just whisper raccoon, 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 raccoon. 
I feel like you're making this more complicated than it needs to be. I just am trying to be creative. I Create like the content that's I cool. I feel like we can just say, spoilers. We will say spoilers. We'll throw a graphic on the screen if you're watching this on the YouTubes. And then yeah. after that, we're just going to talk about it. But, but for now, all the times we just said spoiler, those were fake times. And I'm going to say something to the viewers. We don't get a lot of comments on these. But if you do choose to comment, do not spoil anything. Uh -uh. We'll ban you. We will, in the past, ban you. <laughs> we'll ban you. We'll ban you. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we probably just, won't ban you. Yeah, we, we won't. probably will delete your comment yeah. if you poise, po poise spoilers. <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be a good one. I'm getting <laughs> real, getting loose, real loose. <laughs> I do want to talk about the experience of a movie theater because I thought you were just going to say a spoiler <laughs> right away. I do want to talk about movie. Okay, so raccoon, raccoon, raccoon. <laughs> no, don't, don't, no. Uh, no. no. Okay, so no spoilers right now. Yo, we're gonna, you want to talk about the movie going experience. I just want to talk about this experience because um, first of all, I uh, purchased my tickets online. That was just a kerfluffle within itself. Well, again, because this movie made all the money, the moment the tickets went on sale, everyone was clamoring to buy that first day ticket. Yeah, it pre-sold, I think, more than Infinity War, Star Wars, something else, all combined. Yeah. Like, so everyone's in their, everyone's probably seen this movie by now. Probably. You would hope. Yeah. I um, mean, some people have children, some people have stuff going on. Yes. They don't have time. It, I, I understand. You but gotta you gotta dodge those spoils. Yeah, just delete all the apps off your phone, every single one, even the camera one. I had to do that. Yeah, I just was like, I'm throwing Instagram over there. I don't want to be taking a picture of my loved ones and in the background see a spoiler for Endgame. Yeah, what what the f? I don't want someone just down the street to whisper in my ear what happens. Yeah, so we're not gonna do that until later. Yeah, then we'll whisper in your ear. I go to the movie theater and I purchase my ticket online. So I'm trying to pull up my ticket on the the uh -uh. phone. Verizon service apparently doesn't exist out there. <laughs> I couldn't load the email, and I think... So you're just trying to convince them? <laughs> no, I swear I bought it! Marianne, my girlfriend, and I are pacing around, and I think she's starting to notice that the fun movie-going experience is already off to a rocky, yeah. rocky start, where I'm, like, sweating a little bit. I was like, <laughs> what if, for whatever reason, I can't see this right now? What if I have to wait until another day? I have to do this. So I go all the way out into the opposite end of the parking lot. <laughs> Nothing's loading. Go all the way back inside. Nothing's loading. In the very base email that will load that says, click this button to show your ticket, right above that is a confirmation number. Mm. So then I just go to the person. I say, I can't load this. Does this confirmation? That, that's all you need. I was like, that's it? They're like, yeah. It's like, oh, I would have wished I would have known that before I took four <laughs> laps around this goddamn building. But got my seat, got in there. Empty-ish theater. Very unique. I wonder if that's because everyone was trying to get that first day. This is what, so what I did, uh, I was trying to get like that Thursday or Friday night mm -hmm. ticket for like the whatever 6, 7 p.m. showing. And Fandango and the AMC website were just being trash. Like you could not get on there. It was weirdly enough, which I guess maybe this was like a weird bug built in. Good job, Marvel. Every time I would go to like select my seats for my end game showing, it would like time out. But it wouldn't just time out to the homepage of Fandango. It would time out to buying tickets for Captain Marvel. Oh, smart. Yeah. They're just like, are you sure you want to see this yeah. one? But have you seen this one first? That's pretty but Yes, good. of course. I gave you all my money. But <laughs> it's it was very interesting. I'm like, no, I, uh, I somebody's going to accidentally buy tickets for Captain Marvel. Thinking they were getting it. And it's like, yeah. wow, I guess I can go tomorrow? This is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. But, so I ended up just like foregoing that and saying, uh, I'll, I'll see it Saturday. And yeah. so I just skipped ahead a few days on the calendar on there and was like, Bold oh, choice. I can get the best seats mm -hmm. in the theater on Saturday afternoon. Wait, do you have to, you get to select your seats? If you do IMAX. Oh. I always do IMAX if I can, because again, reserve seats. One, you don't have to show up until the Ooh, actual like, movie, movie start time because you have reserve seats. Smart. Two, I am very picky about where I sit in the theater. So I get to pick that ahead of time. You're a, you're a front row. No, God, no. no. No, yes, you are. No, I am. Uh, so you have projector booth here. Uh huh. Then there's a row. Uh huh. And then, so the IMAX theater is weird. There's like seats on the side of the projector booth and everything is weird. But projector booth, row, perfect row. You go you go one row in front of the row next to the projector booth. You're two rows Two in. rows in front of the projector. That would have been a lot easier. <laughs> and dead center. And dead so center. H13 and 14, mm -hmm. if you happen to go to the Missoula IMAX theater, are my preferred perfect seats. Don't buy those. Those are mine. 
<laughs> oh, sweet. Um, <laughs> I'm super you. confused because you always kind of put off that vibe like you're a front row seer. Because <laughs> me, like, oh, no, whenever, yeah, whenever you start a conversation with me or anyone, you sit down on the ground and look up at us, which <laughs> I, I was like, this is interesting. You're like, I love front yeah, row. I love seeing people's worst angles. <laughs> <laughs> Just like nothing but chin. Everyone's a pair. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I've never seen the top of anyone's head. So you had perfect seats. I'm not as picky in that. Obviously, I, I do the... Uh, if I can kind of shave the seats around me just so I don't have someone like rubbing up against me as I'm watching the movie, which Wait, like, so even if you're not waiting for someone, I don't try to put off the energy like someone's going to be sitting here. So you shouldn't. I, I kind of usually leave a two seat gap where it's like if a couple needs to take seats, gladly take them. I'm not leaving three because three is like a family. Like, right. They're gonna but are free. you, I want to establish here, are you lying? Nope. I, are you throwing down a coat nope. over seats that aren't going to be filled? I, I am not that, I'm not that big okay. of a jerk. I leave those open. I just kind of, it's like the parking lot guy where I park a little too close, but not close so enough. So you kind of sit on the yeah. The I wanna, thing? Yeah, a little you bit. You want to give off the energy of, oh, this one, if you sit here, you're going to be uncomfortable with yeah. my elbow. I also take off my pants. Oh, and set those on the seat next to you. Yeah, those <laughs> are, you said coat. I'm I did say guy. coat. Pants Sorry, guy. I was not more specific. Yeah, and uh but I will say, this movie experience, mm -hmm. I, I was this close. I don't know if I've just been, a, I'm a grumpier man these days. I <laughs> Probably. Do. I have a little grouchiness that I didn't have in the past. There was an old man behind us. Mm. There was one tiny puddle of Coca-Cola Sprite <laughs> or some sort of a water substance. And he had his boot, his cowboy <laughs> boot. And he, it was like a nervous tick. You yeah. know when like people watch stuff, they kind of like shake their leg or apparently Marianne said she glanced at me a couple of times and my hands were just like <laughs> excited. Yeah, so good. <laughs> but the guy just tippy taps his feet in the puddle and the puddle is here. So splish, 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 yeah, and, and, but then he would like stop and then he would go. <laughs> and it, oh, it, to the point where I did this a couple of times where look, I did the, the, the look back. And then he just stared at me and kept tapping. <laughs> and then I was like, is this man challenging me? I don't think he knew what he was doing. He didn't. And he, you know, he was a sweet old man. Yeah. I was about two more times ready to just throw down and punch him. But lucky enough, the theater was loud. Mm. There is some quiet moments in the movie that I will, I will always remember where someone's like, you know, speaking. It's a dead silent. And you mm. just hear. <laughs> and I was like, God damn it, dude. See, for me, uh. I, I don't like people talking in the theater. I don't like people just like, what's happening? Yeah. Who's that guy? Uh, like, especially when they're very bad whisperers. That's the one thing is like, they're, can, they're you, louder whisperers yeah, than they like, are. There was a couple of times I whispered something to Devin in like a moment, but like, I know I whispered at a level that only she could hear. Give me a good whisper. What's a good whisper? Well, somewhere? we have microphones in front of us. So I don't think that's going to work. I mean, people have headphones in their ears. Maybe I, I uh, that's pretty loud. I think this is an okay whisper. I think this is an okay whisper. <laughs> that's a perfect whisper. That's too. That's too quiet. That like, was like what? it felt like my lips were in your ear canal, like little tongues coming just out, painting the inside. Just Arthur the Aardvark. Well, <laughs> I don't know why he popped in my head. <laughs> he could have been any Aardvark. <laughs> but it. Uh, he, there was a person behind me that made it like he was maybe. I don't know. He wasn't talking, but he was a bit noisier than average viewer, but mm. in a positive way that made me enjoy the experience even more. He was so into it yeah and he was uh so there's this bad bad take on twitter going around of this video of this guy star wars boy yeah, yeah the one who's really excited about the star wars trailer who it's very endearing and very sweet and the tweet about him is like oh look at this undateable man and i'm like Ugh, shut up which luckily the whole internet was pretty oh, much like hey, I, yeah i love that the internet came right yes. back and just said like, um, don't be a jerk but it felt like that kid was sitting behind me I had one of those kids in front yeah. of me. He was a little, he wasn't as charming. Mm. I think it was because he was more of a, well, actually. Yeah. Uh, hearing some of their conversation, him and the, the girl that he was with, it was like, these people are having the smartest conversation <laughs> back and forth. And it's, it's very interesting and cute. See, mine was like, uh, one moment they like, a thing happens in the movie. <laughs> and I like went over to Devin. I was just like, <gasps> Someone's gonna be there. <laughs> and she knew what I meant. I didn't even have to say the character's name. Like, that's literally what I said to her. I was like, someone's gonna be there. Oh. And she's like, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that person was there. Oh, um, <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. But that's like as far as our conversations went during the movie. But the, the guy behind me, like the Star Wars trailer played before the movie. And after it ended, he just goes, Yeah! <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> like he was just like, no one else said anything, but the, the trailer editor was like, yeah, that's pretty and good. And somebody else was like, I know. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. I, uh, but there was a, a scene I won't spoil right now. I'll bring it up again later. Raccoon, raccoon? Uh, no, nope. I'm not going to spoil it right now. <laughs> you, uh, there's a, a scene that happens uh, in the movie where he similarly was just like, yeah! He, just, he felt it. Yeah. And to be Which, fair, it is the maybe the coolest moment in the movie. We'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I think we know exactly what it is. <laughs> um, I did have a family behind me that uh, they... You know, it was like mom, dad, older son. Um, there was a couple other people sitting next to next to them. I don't know if they're all related, but mom and dad kept having like in the during the movie a little bit during the uh, the previews at the credits. Just so many questions like, "Who's that guy? <laughs> Wait, see, who's the man that made all of these? What's his name?" And I was just like, "Oh!" And I part of me was like, "Should I turn around?" I don't want to have a conversation with these people, but I know every answer. Right. So it's like, Stanley, Stanley, <laughs> what? So, but it was endearing. I mean, I looked at it and I was like, if it was my parents, they wouldn't, they would probably be asking the same questions. Yeah. Is that a good? I think that's a good segue. Yeah. It's a good segue to what we want to do today. I think, I, yeah. I mean, we could, we could talk about the movie, but I don't think we should do that yet. I, I, I want to, I, Everything I want to say about it involves spoilers. Yeah. So I do want to like push that a little bit further. And you just very wisely mentioned our parents. Yes. And that they would be asking a lot of questions about Avengers and game if they were to go see it. Because I, I think we're making some assumptions here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my parents have seen any Marvel movies. I think my parents have seen... I haven't watched a Marvel movie with my parents, right. which is a weird thing to say because there's 22 of them. There's so many. And I used to watch movies with them all of the time. Granted, I also lived yeah. with them. Well, also, like, I know my dad is more into the superhero movies. Like, he's probably watched the Iron Man movies and stuff. But I know that my mom is not, like, a big action movie person. Mm -hmm. So I don't think she would willingly go, like, sit down on the couch and put on a Captain America movie. I think that if she has seen any of these movies, it's because my dad had it on and she sat there probably mm -hmm. like reading while he was watching, not really paying attention. So I, I don't, and I could be completely wrong. Sorry, mom, if I am. I honestly, but I, I mean, assume she doesn't enjoy these films. I think there's also this little bit of a sliding scale where I don't know, like Avengers now, boom, everyone knows Avengers or you would think they know Avengers, but I think there's so many superheroes and weird nerd culture that yeah i don't i honestly don't know if my mom knows like the core avengers or knows like she'll be like superman like i have <laughs> yeah. no idea well there's only one way to find out we gotta ask them we gotta ask them let's call our moms i think you should call your moms first okay i'm gonna call my moms first and, and then we'll does call she, your mom does she know we're calling her she kind of does kind of she does. doesn't have any idea what we're doing she does know I'm calling her to ask her a question. Perfect. I'll let you take lead on your mother. Right. I will say a couple of things like raccoon, raccoon, raccoon. If she starts, if she's already seen <laughs> if it. she saw it and just starts like, spoiling. Oh, I love this part. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. But yeah, if, if my mama happens to drop some spoilers, we'll put up an alert. Mama Gatos, what should I call her? <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's her name, right? Yeah. On her first name, it says Mama yeah, Gatos. Birth certificate, Mama Gatos. Mama Gatos. Sometimes I go to look for my mom on my phone, and I, for some reason, look for her first name, <laughs> which is not how I have her in my phone. Mine's, mine's Momker. Oh, that works. <laughs> Mine's just mom. But sometimes I, like, scroll to where her first name would be in the phone, and I'm like, that, no, why would I ever do that? That's not where she is. Uh, let's give her a call. And I think you got to make sure that it's uh, connected to Yes, the, I will to. do my best. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. Oh, this is this first call. First call of the show. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hey, Hello. Okay, good. Yeah, I was like, it was this moment where she can't hear us. Yeah. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're, we're both here. We have a question for you. Uh, okay, maybe I have an answer for you. I'll, nice. I'll be very curious. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, like the biggest movie ever it came out this weekend, right? Right. Avengers Endgame. Right. Have you heard of it? Yes, I have. Smart Mama Gatos. Good, good first answer. Um, my question is, how many of the Avengers can you name? Oh, you're going to be really difficult here now, aren't you? 
<laughs> I just want, if it's one, I'll be surprised a little bit, but I want to know what, like if there's more than one that you can name of the, the people who are the characters Captain America. All oh, right. We got one. one. Yeah, but- um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch your shows. <laughs> That's what I, I assumed that dad would know, but I don't know that you know. Any more? Um, 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 you know, you could have asked an easy question. I, I know. I, you know what? You got the, the main one. You got like the leader of the group. So that's really impressive. Yeah. If you can pull out a second one, do you know any other superheroes? They might be in the Avengers. Um, just Captain Um, 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 Batman. (laughs) Yep. Um, Green Lantern. Um, (laughs) she's a DC fan. Um, I get it. Uh, well, um, so far you've got, you named the one Avenger. Yay! (laughs) Spider-Man is there. Spider-Man is a good answer. (laughs) Uh, she crushed it. Yeah. I mean, you got two. Get, okay, so for, for I thought I would. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, and you named you named two other characters who are not in this movie. Batman and Green Lantern are not in this movie, mm-hmm. but Captain America and Spider Man. I think that's a great job, and I want to thank you for taking the time to answer this uh, just very important. very important question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, like I said, you could have asked an easier question, though. You know. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's the biggest movie in the world, Mom. <laughs> Yes, I know, but I don't watch those movies. Well, I think what we've learned from this is once we hang up, you're going to have to go online and start learning all those Avengers names. Yeah, you can go watch all 20 of those movies. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It might take me a while. (laughs) That's fine. That's great. Well, thank you so much. As long as the next time we talk, you can name one more Avenger. (laughs) We'll see. I'll do that. All right. I promise I'll do that. (laughs) All right. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) You're welcome. Bye bye. Oh, Mama Gator. She got two. Yeah, she got two. That was that's see, that's all you gotta do. And she came right out of the gate with Captain America. Dude, she I think she likes Chris Evans. That's what I'm getting out of that. That's fair. She's uh she's a fanboy. She's a fan. Um I gotta I gotta call my mom. Yeah, now. Call your mom. I'm I don't gonna, have her number, so yeah, you're gonna have to I, put that in. There. I remember it. I call some random person. <laughs> we can ask them too. <laughs> oh yeah. That raccoon's great. <laughs> okay, raccoon, raccoon. <laughs> She's not going to answer. She's like, who's this number? I'm going to call Mama, Mama Kerr. Hello. What's up, Murray? No, Matt. What are you doing? You're just live on Matt and Maddie. Hello. What? Yeah, you're, <laughs> you don't have to pretend like you didn't know we were calling you. <laughs> I love it. You're, you're a great actress. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> All right, so um, we we just uh, we just called uh, Mama Gatos and we asked her the the, the same question we're going to ask you. So um, okay. not that you're in competition, but please don't embarrass me. <laughs> um, the question we are asking, um, you, this isn't the actual question, but you know that the biggest movie um, of all time just came out, right? Right. Yes. Do you know the title of that movie? Avengers. Endgame. Boom. So Nailed far, it. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I, I'm glad okay. you wrote that on your hand. Thank you. Um, the question <laughs> is, how many of the, you know, core Avengers, how many of them can you name? Okay. Do I have to start naming them? Yep. Just as many as you can. When you say core, that's in like all of Marvel. Comic? Well, yes and no. There, there's um, certain uh, superheroes that are classified under the Avengers. So I, okay, we just so want to see. Tell me if, if I'm wrong. Okay, okay. perfect, perfect. Um, Hulk. Boom. Thor. That's two. <laughs> um, Spider Man. That's three. I love it. Murray, keep going. Um. Uh. Oh shoot. It's all right. You're doing awesome. Um. Doctor Strange. Wow, would that get <laughs> out of here? <laughs> Where'd you pull that from? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Man. Um, let's see. Oh, Iron Man. I love it. Yep. Yeah. His girlfriend doesn't count, does she? I mean, if you can throw Iron Man's girlfriend's name out there. Isn't it Miss Pepper? Close. You know what? It's it is Miss Pepper Potts. Okay. 
That's good. That was um, okay. So I mean, the rest is just oh, gravy. Cap- Captain America. I love it. I think you know what? If I, you've definitely won the, you competition. definitely have won. You you've named six and a <laughs> half. So uh, it, who's your favorite? Do you have a favorite out there? Oh, Thor. Oh, Thor. Don't say it like that. That's Thor. gross. Mary. Why, why do you <laughs> like Thor? Well, because the story is really like unique and I just feel like um, he's pretty handsome. <laughs> he's he is a he's Hemsworth watchable. is handsome. Yeah, a very <laughs> handsome, handsome boy. Man. He's watchable. <laughs> and I, I guess I just I remember watching the Thor movie more than any of the others. I don't really think I, I watched Hulk or yeah. I, don't think uh, I did, did watch Spider Man, but he's a young boy. Nice. So. That, thank you, Mom. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. <laughs> I, I I appreciate you just coming in and kicking ass. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hey, I'm so glad you guys are doing your Matt and Maddie again. Oh, aw, thank you. Thanks, Mary. It's <laughs> awesome. It's well, awesome. Well, uh, we uh, right, and I hope I hope someday I get to meet Matthew Gato's mom. Oh, <laughs> we'll just patch her in right now. We'll just have us replaced with. <laughs> we'll just have you two host the show yeah. one time, right? Okay. All right, Mom, have a good All rest right. of your day. Yeah, see you guys. Bye. Bye. Wow. Represent. She crushed it. I, I, I honestly didn't say anything to her either, which is it amazing. Sound, yeah, I, I, I was going to ask if you prompted her at all. I just said we're going to call you. Yeah. And so, dude. Wow. Mary Kirk. Sounds like she's watching some of the more of those movies because she pulled Doctor Strange which is that one I was not ready for yeah like a lot of those other ones have been around for years and years and like the pop culture like Hulk is one where I'm like yeah there was an incredible Hulk show Mm -hmm. back in the 70s moms know that moms know that but Doctor Strange was impressive she she does like her Netflix she likes to like uh catch up on those things so I'm, I'm sure my dad watches them too and then he forgets and she remembers so yeah I think my dad probably could have gotten more than two but yeah I mean, yeah, your mom crushed my mom. We said it wasn't a competition, but represent. Yeah. Dude, that was awesome and hilarious. And I love this little phone thing. I would love to use it more. So shoot. yeah, we got to get some more call in guests and maybe I don't want to surprise people with phone calls, but I feel like we could have some yeah. like, friends on the show that maybe we just but give that much of like a warning, like, Hey, in 15 minutes, we're going to call you. No, I think that worked great. And it yeah. just patches through how cool yeah. with that being said, now it's time for raccoon. Raccoon, raccoon, raccoon. There's a little Thanos butt. Spoilers. <laughs> raccoon swinging around. So much. I'm not going to do any of that. Yeah, this is just us waving at the yeah, camera. Right. Spoiler alert. We're going to talk about the movie Endgame, and we're, we're going to dive in right away um, with all the deets. So if you haven't seen it yet, get on out of here. Get on out of here. Get off my porch. That's from the movie. That's a quote from the movie. That's how it ends. That's what- it's really strange. The, the Thanos comes up. He, he's just like, can I, get a, can I get a glass of lemonade? And and Iron Man says, get off my porch! <laughs> weird ending. Very weird ending. This turned very red when you yelled. <laughs> so did all the ears that are bleeding now. <laughs> so yeah, you want to get into... Uh... Yeah, I'm, first of all, I, what I mentioned earlier. I thought we were going to touch fingers. That's what I thought we were going to do. First of all. The little gauntlet diddle. Yeah, little lip. <laughs> took your stones. <laughs> Whoop. Uh, stones. <laughs> I want you to guess what moment in the movie made the guy behind me go, yeah! Oh, I already know. What is it? Because I was that guy in my theater. <laughs> what was it? When Captain America spins Molnir or yep, whatever. That is exactly the, the moment. The Molnir report. When? And he just starts throwing <laughs> that. Like, seriously yes the moment captain america got the hammer was the moment the guy behind me was like yeah dude yeah i mean i i just got chills thinking about it. there it's is same. there is nothing cooler than when he like the delivery of thor chris hemsworth being like i knew it and like yeah. when he comes and does the uppercut and it goes like Boof, and oh, then he kicks so much ass when he has the shield and the hammer throws he's like, it Poof. And it's like a callback to Avengers when he throws the hammer and it hits it and it makes a shockwave. They did that in the forest. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, God. Now I, I literally want to go to that and just see that scene again. Mm. Oh, All right. Well, that was it. That's that how was, I feel about the movie. Bye. It was just a little Chris Evans orgasm right there. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, it was. I, okay. So we didn't really get into our reactions to it. We, we, we said we saw it. How do you, how do you, I think we just start on a baseline. Did you like it? I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved every second of it. I feel like I go 
to a lot of movies now. And I think, cause I watch a lot of movies and sometimes with a more critical eye than I want to, mm -hmm. I have those moments where I'm just like, this is kind of, this scene's boring or eh, that I liked it, but this thing kind of sucked. There is not, and I, I'm sure if somebody tried to talk me into it, I could admit that there was something I didn't like, mm -hmm. but I don't want to talk to that person right now because <laughs> I had such a good time. I hope I'm not that guy. You might be, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but I had such a good time watching this movie and walking out of the theater. I did not have a moment looking back on that movie that I was like, oh, I loved it except for that. Mm. Like I literally every single, like every five minutes in that movie, I was like checking in with myself being like, this is fucking good. Yeah. This is real good. So I, I agree almost a hundred percent with you. I think I left for that movie theater being like, damn, that was an experience. Mm -hmm. I left like trying to rack my brain and feel all of my feelings because I like to be like overthink and analytical. Uh, there was a few aspects that I think we'll, we'll get into that I, I, I might tighten up or I, I might question a little bit mm -hmm. as a movie experience. I can't remember feeling the way I felt in that movie theater ever. I, I, yeah. I felt like it was such a, like I said, I was twiddling my thumbs with nervous energy and excitement and fear. And it, I, it was just like some, like I was just like, I could not believe we were watching Endgame and it's this good. That was part of it for me, especially early on when I realized like all of the trailer material existed in like the first 15 minutes of the movie. So good. I was like, oh, I haven't seen any of this movie. And like I saw we, a lot of the trailers, but like I didn't see most of what happened in that second, like the like I guess the last eighth. Can the, we just whatever. please thank if it's the Russo brothers or Disney or whoever decided that they got it. They knew everyone was going mm -hmm. to come see this movie. Thank you for not showing us the movie. Well, they, and thank you for not like I know they've like come out in interviews and said that they digitally manipulated things in the trailers to hide things mm -hmm. i don't feel like and maybe there's a specific moment that i'm forgetting but in the past they have manipulated things and straight up lied yeah. in trailers like in infinity war there was a clip in the trailers of hulk well there's a clip and yeah hulk, hulk was not in that movie and everyone at all. running through the force yes. together and like that's not that a real thing not in there. but like in this i know there was a couple things like in one scene captain america in the trailer is wearing a different suit than he's actually wearing because in this movie he had to time travel and wear mm -hmm. his old suit, mm -hmm. which is super cool. And in the trailer, he's wearing his newer suit in yeah. that moment. And it's like, those are the small things they had to manipulate to lie to us. And I'm okay with that. No, I, I think everything as a whole uh, blew me away. I thought that the, uh, I think we need to maybe like break down some of the character moments and kind of talk mm. through all. Yeah, the I have not really talked about this movie in depth with anyone yeah. yet. Like Devin and I talked about our reactions immediately afterwards, but I haven't grilled this movie yet and really thought about it too yeah, much. And I think it, it, I, it would probably help me if we just go kind of down the line, starting with like the least important of the main, like I, I think a good starting point is the, the dynamic of Hawkeye and, yeah. um, you know, Black Widow. Oh, so you're talking like as far as like the core Avengers, yeah, and not, then, not like all the people who come back. Yeah. I think we can get into our like favorite moments, but I think yeah. that core, cause at the end of the day, this is such an emotional, like it's a three hour movie. I have never sat through a three-hour movie, and it felt like one hour to me. Yeah, it, there was not a moment where I was like, oh, come on, come on, guys. Like, I, I never checked my phone to see what time oh, it was. Gosh. I was fine. I didn't have to go to the bathroom in the middle of it, which was I'm grateful for, because I saw a tweet before the movie was out that was like, when you see this word on the screen, go to the bathroom. That's your good bathroom break. And it was like, they said the two of the moments you could go are the San Francisco title card and the New Jersey title card. And I'm like... I liked both of those moments a lot. That's San Francisco is when we get to see Ant-Man come back in the van, which let's pause there. Ant-Man, the actual hero of this movie, that rat. Oh yeah. If the right? rat never, <laughs> if the rat got dusted, he never touches the van yeah. and never boots Ant-Man back and we're fucked. Yeah. Hey. One rat needed to climb across. Yeah, that rat thing. say, it, it, I'm going to name him Splinter and he will be my best friend. <laughs> this is the spinoff now. The next <laughs> Avengers movie will have the turtles in it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh my God. Ugh. You're just like Ready Player 2'd me. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> that just sounds gross because I just recently watched Ready Player 1 for the first time. Very bad movie. Especially when you kind of compare it to. I was I was thinking about that because like the big battle scene yep. in this movie versus that movie, somewhat similar structure of like, 
here's a billion people on this side, here's a billion people on this side, and they're running at each other. The difference is so huge because Ready Player One is like, here's a bunch of random characters who, if you pause the movie and look closely, you can figure out who they are because none of them get important moments. Whereas in this movie, I got to see everyone important. Do a cool thing. And I think the emotional payoff is A, the the genius of Marvel building 22 movies. But like, yes. and, and, and watching, we're just going to finish Ready Player One thought, but like seeing <laughs> like the robot and the, the Godzilla, it's like, we know what they're, what they do, but they don't do it or showcase. And it's not like, it's like amazing. It just felt no, hollow. There's this no heart. Is, yeah, exactly. This has so much heart. And just seeing the small moments of like Peter Parker being like, oh so nice and introducing himself to Valkyrie mid fight. So He's like, good. Hey, nice to meet you. Whoa. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I think the, the black widow and Hawkeye thing was very, um, I, I, I guess I figured it was going to happen. I was pretty impressed with how they linked those two into this because their core relationship, I think in the first few Avengers was there. And obviously Hawkeye not being in infinity war, they, they start with his family getting dusted and it's like, yeah. fuck. Well, especially I was so, I thought we were going to see that little kid turn to dust. And I was so worried. Like I was, I was ready to like watch that little kid's face. Just go. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm very happy. It Off was still screen. very emotionally like powerful, but I was happy that we did not have to watch that little kid turn to dust. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because it would have been very, very sad. Um, what do you think about the scene between um, those two at the Soul the Stone? The Soul Stone thing? Yeah. It was one of those things where, that was one of those moments where if I want to be nitpicky, I'm like, maybe someone should have been a little bit more specific about the Soul Stone before they went. Yeah. Like Nebula had some information she should have shared. That someone, yeah, it's like- Someone we, has to die. Yeah, we know- like, I guess Nebula wasn't there. She didn't know. She understood she, what happened. Yeah, so she's kinda. like, yeah, she knew. She's assuming that it's like someone has to die for the soul stone. Yeah. We can put two, two together. But the moment those two are paired up, I'm like, one of them's dead. Yeah. The only thing that uh, ruined it for me is, you know, it's Scarlett uh, Johansson. See, because in the trailer, they show Hawkeye running through a red tunnel. And I was like, we haven't seen that yet. And I figured oh. that it was like, he's got to be there running through the that tunnel. Is, that is smart. Yeah. I did not actually, in the moment, I didn't put that together when he was jumping off the cliff. I did not put that together. But now that you say that, that is a weird kind of marketing choice, I yeah. guess, because they are so careful about marketing this movie that every like, yeah, I, cause I did when they eventually were going back to the headquarters thing, I then was remembering that scene of him running in the tunnel with the monsters behind him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if I would have just remembered that scene 20 minutes earlier, I totally would have thought, that, thought the same thing. And so I was like, okay, but then there was the moment as I was watching that, I was like, but we never saw the Scarlett Johansson just firing the gun. That too. So then I was like, are they... And then he jumps and say, like, so I, so I all of that could have been mani manipulation in the trailer. Exactly. So then I was like, what if they both die or something? Ha like I, I wasn't, I was assuming that Hawkeye would live and it happened. And, you know, I thought, uh, I thought it was really well done though, with like them fighting each other, like to die, like, yeah, just kill like, themselves. No, like I, you can't, I'm going to do this. And, and I thought it's, it's kind of a bummer. Cause I was hoping that we would get, uh, maybe like a black widow series on Disney plus or like a black widow movie eventually. Cause they've been talking about are. a black widow movie forever. They, they're going to do a prequel, which, which then okay, I feel like, like what, I mean, I guess, yeah, cool. We'll see some spy stuff, but it, it, knowing someone's going to die feels less. See, and I actually might disagree with you there. I was talking, we were talking about this last night after we watched the movie and part of what felt so good about Endgame is now I want to go back and watch every Marvel movie mm -hmm. again to see the linking to and like feel the story yeah to feel it's it is complete uh -huh. I can go back and watch those moments now in Iron Man and they have a special like level of resonance well lucky for you they're going to probably release the Infinity <laughs> the, Collection the biggest and it's going to be a giant gauntlet and it filled with Blu-rays <laughs> you just open it and it's like I want to watch this one I am on board yeah, I will buy that how much sure. would you, how much would you pay for all not of them? as much as they're going to charge me so $1, I will not buy it. I'll Shoot. just rent them yeah right uh, <laughs> okay so yeah we I thought it was you know Scarlett Johansson did some cool crying and emotion I thought there was some gravitas there I really I, yeah, and like I want Clint to be back with his family, whereas yeah, we don't like a lot of these characters in this movie. This is the end of the line for them. Mm -hmm. Whether they died, whether they're wrapping up their own story, it's because like we've had so many movies with them that 
their their emotional arc is done. <laughs> we don't necessarily need like yes, will we always watch a Chris Evans as Captain America show, movie, whatever? Yes, we'll keep watching a billion of those. But one, I don't think he wants to keep making them. Yeah, and two, like we. Sometimes it's good that things end. end. Is a, it, there? It needs to be an end. When it's forever, it like it loses some of the worth. Well, especially when they like have to undo emotionally good storytelling mm. to make that happen. Like there's supposed to be a WandaVision show. Yeah, that I'm guessing will also be a prequel because it has know. to be. Yeah, because he's dead, dead. Yeah. Um, but that's one of those things. Like potentially, if they really wanted to, they could make some sort of like. Oh, this is an alternate reality or something. But uh, like it's so it works so well that to undo a retcon any of that stuff would be it's doing the whole concept and the whole story a disservice, I think, right. to keep retconning. Um I think moving on to a different character, uh thoughts on Hulk. Uh I his introduction scene is one of the best. Is so is so good. He reminds me of like a WWE superstar. Like he's <laughs> like this John Cena slash. Yeah. Like he's like you know you listen to your parents. I'm a meathead, but hey, let me take yeah. a phone. It's like who oh, you guys want to sell me? Yeah. Yeah. Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. And I I do like there was something. I was thinking about this because everyone there was leaks and everyone was talking about how Professor Hulk would yeah. be a thing. So I was like, okay, they're gonna that was do like it. one of the earliest leaks because of different toys. But I thought they were gonna do like this whole segment where mm -hmm. Bruce is trying to figure out how to do it and the Hulk he needs to get the Hulk to come out to fight or whatever, but no. and something happened. No, it's just like five years later, which also powerful story device, like fucking cut off Thanos's head and yeah, it, the it's fifteen minutes in and it's just like Whoa, well, that's what uh, for me, like, yeah, that having that at the beginning of your movie, like it does that really smart thing of any assumptions that anyone had about this film. They're suddenly like, wait, but how, what yeah. are you going to do now? I don't know what the rest of this movie is. Yeah. It, it, I thought, I think Thanos will be a whole another character we talk about. Yeah. Um, I think they, what they did with that was, I think something I would have never have thought of. And how it all played out, I thought was amazing. Oh, it's very, very smart and makes a character like Nebula more important than she's ever even been before. And yeah, I think that every time that's happening in the movie, it doesn't feel like a trick the movie is trying to play on me. Mm -hmm. But like the moment she realizes like Thanos knows mm -hmm. is oh. that scary moment. They have a few of those really good scary moments where like Thanos knows there's the moment when, uh, Iron Man doesn't get the Tesseract. Yep. Where you're just like, well, that's literally their entire plan. When the plan goes awry, it's like, yeah, nothing. Like, here we are trying to build up this this story that, you know, the heroes are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And having these moments where it's like, oh, fuck, this is actually not as easy <laughs> as it, they're making it feel like it yeah. was going to be. Well, and sometimes they have like a quick fix. They're like, okay, well, okay, we didn't figure that out. But what if we just go back to the 70s and we get it again? It's mm -hmm. like, okay, you figured that one out. But the idea of like, no, but... Uh, Thanos is looking at all of her memories. He yeah. knows what you're doing. Yeah. Ah! Thanos. We'll just fuck it. We'll talk about Thanos. Yeah. Thanos. Jelly. Loves jelly. Jelly. He just loves jelly so much. Did you much. put that on the purple button on yeah, purpose? I color coordinated them. So Ooh. yeah, you can, there's only this many colors to choose from. Oh my God. God, <laughs> that makes sense because Korg's kind of a teal color. <laughs> he is kind of. I was like, no Avenger is teal. teal. Yep. Korg. Yep. Good job. Yeah, I did good. What? Christy, bad guys of history. Yeah. One of my favorite Avengers. That's not the Hulk. Yeah, but no, it's it's <laughs> Waffle Man yeah. from Mystery Men. That's Dane Cook's character. Yeah. Yep. You know, he was that scene where he comes in with Mjolnir is super cool. <laughs> to be fair, anyone could have been in that last scene. That's true. And they could have just hidden them very well. So maybe all the mystery men are there. <laughs> I really was like, fingers crossed, we get him. Uh Thanos Jelly. is uh <laughs> so menacing they oh, yeah. bring back 2012 14 thanos and His armor and everything and he he has this physicality and this menace because he's starting to piece together his destiny falling apart yeah. that i was like you know what thanos is a good guy because <laughs> captain america said himself at the start of the movie he's like you know there's whales it's pretty cool i saw some whales <laughs> like rats are awesome whales are cool like the world's better dude and, and so it's like yeah thanos was right but we kind of reverse then you it. get 
uh, um, Tony Stark. Yep. Who is the like, oh, everything sucks. Yeah, everything's bad right <laughs> His now. His life sucks. <laughs> oh, man. When he came back to Earth, oh, my and God. it's just like, fuck you guys. Yeah. You got, mm, He's all skinny and gross. What's the point? Yeah. You're just like, that is not what I expected. Like, that was one of those, like, we don't see that Tony Stark at all in the trailers. It was really good. So to see that Tony Stark, I'm just like, oh, that's good, necessary character. No, I think it was, uh, I think it was really powerful. But um, what I was going to say is, you know, the jelly. The, the jelly he's he's just so visceral and so mean and he had this like i'm going to make this personal i wasn't going to i like yeah. i was scared and of thanos more than i ever been and i thought as a like he was a villain in this and mm -hmm. i really appreciate that they well, because we get that sort circle. of like philosophy major like poetry yeah. reading thanos in infinity war where he's just like no guys i promise this will be fine what i'm doing is good mm -hmm. whereas on this one you get the thanos before he became that person mm -hmm. and so he kind of has the same mission but he's maybe doesn't even see it as much of a reality yet because he doesn't have he doesn't have the first uh, stone. No, no, he hasn't. So he's he's just looking at this as like a, a big dream, but he's still in his like I will burn down the earth to get what I want. It's not a tangibility yet. There's nothing no. there. He's like seeking it. So there's like that aggression. There's that scene where he gets beamed back to Nebula and Gamora, and mm -hmm. he's all covered in jelly, and he <laughs> he just looks angry, and it's like fuck. They're destroying a world to try to get these and. It's just a super amazing. Um, uh, the best part of this movie, and I, I, I think that you would agree, okay. is Big Lebowski. I disagree. You didn't like him. I'm okay with him. He, it's a joke that goes on maybe a few too many times of like, hey, he's fat. And so like, I get it. Yeah. Like it's kind of, it's funny to see Thor different. And to me, it's more like the emo for me my favorite thor scene is him and his mom yes and that's kind of i guess the full circle of why i think it's the most powerful and the best because i feel like thor personally after ragnarok infinity war is my f favorite like mm. i think he you know me and my mom were the same yeah <laughs> um no i think he's very charismatic and humorous and at the end of the day i go to like these superhero popcorn flicks for, like, for the emotion but for mm. the fun and i thought what they did with him was like meme big mood that's me yes i feel like thor yeah. in life where it's like i wish i was a little bit more fit i love alcohol and drinking fuck doing stuff like i'm not as good as i used to be but i still remember the good old days like i sometimes feel like that and i i think that related with me there was aspects that were a little like on the nose but Fortnite. the Fortnite was the main one where <laughs> mostly I was like, like cor like korg playing Fortnite. i was like Oh my God! Am I pulled you off? Yeah, it was a little like I know they have their deal and partnership, but just don't like show the screen. And I would have been like, "Oh, they're gaming." It's yeah, because let's be real, Fortnite in twenty twenty three or whatever the year is going to be. Yeah, Ooh, probably not going to be the biggest thing. Also, a rock man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the unbelievable part yeah, of this right. movie is the Fortnite will <laughs> still be popular in five years. I thought the mom scene was so powerful. It's so good because I. One, I love that literally like everyone came back for this movie. So good. I don't know that Natalie Portman came back. That might have just been a Thor 2 clip. I'm pretty sure she didn't. I'm not positive yeah. on that. They might have just put Rocket into a Thor clip. I think so. I haven't seen the Thor movies in long enough that to even know. Because the fact that she didn't like react or see or and whatever. And that she's only in that. And the only other time we see her is like off screen, like out of focus. Yes. Um. So I don't know that she actually came back. But... The this is the greatest hits of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They brought back everyone, even the kid from Iron Man Three, which <laughs> is super confusing in the moment. Bothered me so much. Why? I am sitting there and we're panning. <laughs> yeah, and we're showing. This is this is the a funeral scene. Tony Stark dies. By the way, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully by this point, if you're watching this, you have seen the movie. Because this is how dropped... someone watches the movie. They're listening to us explain it weirdly out of order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tony Stark dies. So they're panning. To all of the the Avengers and all of these superheroes and people, the the general, I think the general is there. I don't remember. Yeah, Thunderbolt, but, Wilson, yeah. Roberts, or whatever. His Mustache name is. man. They go through, and then there's this moment where they show just a person, a kid, a teenager, and I was like, all right. And he's not even standing yeah. near anybody no, else. He's by himself. He's by himself. And I was like, that's not Spider Man. We just, I think we just saw Spider Man. Yeah. So I thought they were going to have this moment of. Dude, they fucking pulled it off. They got somehow the rights to Fox. They're going to make this kid be either a Fantastic Four or they're going to make him an X-Man. And 
off screen. His bone claws yeah, come yeah. out. Honestly, <laughs> I thought it was going to be like either a young Wolverine or a young something that off screen Tony Stark was mentoring. And that's right. how we link into like this mm. next phase. And I was like, at the very end, they're going to cut to like him talking to someone. They're going to be like, what was your name? And he's going to be like, Reed Richards. Yeah, something like that. And it would be I'm like, stretchy. <laughs> I'm stretchy. Not yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's a man voice in this boy. Wow, MCU, you took weird liberties with this one. <laughs> My superpower is I just people thought- trust me on the phone because I sound like this. <laughs> yeah, this is him. I want to buy it. I want all the pizzas you have. Okay, kid, you can relax. Uh, I just thought that would have been a super powerful, like, cool way to tease the yeah, next way. I think uh, I get for the reason to one, bookend it. It is confusing because we haven't seen that boy since I've Iron never, Man 3. I never really watched Iron Man 3 all well, the way and through. And so if you if you have recently watched Iron Man 3, that moment is emotionally resonant because like Tony Stark spends that whole movie with that kid mm-hmm. pretty much. And so it's a good callback and to bring him back, but it has been like 7 years and that kid looks way different now. Also, who called that kid? I mean, happy. happy? Is happy like, yeah, you know that guy that you really love? He died. See, <laughs> it, but I I thought, like, I'm not surprised by it because in a lot of their, like, recapping the past 10 years packages, they've included the shot of Tony Stark flying off, looking down at that kid, and, like, Tony, like, left him with, like, a helmet or a glove or something from the Iron Man suit. And so he, like, flew off and kind of, they keep showing that moment in a lot of the recaps. And so I'm like, oh, Something about that has to come up. And I wonder if maybe they will make that kid someone. He might be the new Iron Man. Yeah, it, it could be something like that. I do think uh, there's also that, like, this is before he met, uh, I was going to say Toby Maguire. This is before he met Peter Parker. <laughs> Tom Holland. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be they're gonna be fighting, but yeah. like, no, I'm his favorite team. Exactly. It's like, this was his, like, first kind of, I maybe want to be a dad right. moment where he, like, is mentoring yeah. this kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I thought uh, Thor was funny. I thought it his. Oh yeah, he was badass, and I thought it was just very. It was cool to see more emotion from this character and the mom. Uh, that quote where it's like, "Stop trying to be who everyone thinks you should be and start being who you are." Right, whatever it is vaguely. I maybe nailed it. It's something like that. Yeah, but, but I think that it, I think the Thor character stuff works really well. I think they do rely a little bit, maybe too much, on the like he looks frumpy. Yeah, I am excited for Chubby Thor cosplay. Oh God, so I can't good. wait to see that. So good, and everyone in the theater is like, "I can be him." <laughs> <laughs> but I think that also that moment leads to the really good. Uh, we can talk about another character here uh, with Valkyrie. Oh yes, uh, we're at the handoff at the end, which it's not as like much of a handoff as they did for some other characters in this movie of like, "You're the new Thor." Yeah, but it's kind of that. It, I think it was just it's it felt earned. It felt yeah like, and that's what like going into this movie, I said I want a whole new lineup of Avengers. I want sam to be captain america i want valkyrie to be the new thor i wanted shuri to be the new iron man that one didn't happen but oh that would have been super cool she'd be a good iron man because she has the pulse cannons and she's really good with tech and stuff yeah she could still happen in the future yeah, yeah but like that was my like dream lineup is that we get all new of the originals um and that obviously mm-hmm. didn't happen but it kind of happened in that Thor hands off the mantle of like, you now rule new Asgard and turn it, whatever you want it to be. You're the, the leader. Right. I'm doing my own thing, which is hanging out in the, with the guardians. Yeah, so there'll be a guardians of the galaxy, uh, three as guardians, as guardians of the galaxy <laughs> with Thor. And then we'll get probably, I mean, there's been rumblings of a Thor four with Taika YTT directing oh, again. If that happens, and it's I'm like all there, especially if it's with Tessa Thompson and Korg and stuff hanging out, which there was that moment where I was like, how did any of these people, Live yeah, we didn't get that fan of, like this little roach and Rockman just like jumped out. Maybe like we're yeah. fine with that. It's a little yeah, it is a little weird because we don't know like where they were mm. necessarily. We know that like they weren't there at the beginning of Infinity War mm. in the ship that they were in at the end of Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah so, so they must have been in like an escape pod, pod and, and that's fine because we're we're cutting in an in Infinity War as they're like slaughtered. So who knows? Yes. There was the panic. It's also of, it's like. Not that important to everything else that's happening, Mm -hmm. but it just is one of those things like if you want to get nitpicky, like how did Captain Marvel know where Tony Stark was? How did the Asgardians get back to Earth? How did like all this stuff? I think uh, you you bring up Captain Marvel. Um, I am Iron Man. That's not. I just, it was red. I could do this all day. (laughs) All right. Well, neither of those were. 
Oh, that's our theme song. <laughs> we didn't play that this episode because we haven't done it yet. We got to do it at the recap <laughs> moment. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Behind the curtain, we film the intros later. Why are all the gorgeous ones homicidal maniacs? That, yep, that's also. Your mom said that was an Avenger. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> There's no black button, so I picked the lightest color. <laughs> you were going to talk about Captain Marvel. I just, I wanted to hear your thoughts. So they, they, they introduced Captain Marvel, the yeah. movie, right before, like a month or two before. And uh, we, get, we get her in this movie, and I, I, I was just curious what you thought that payoff was, was I mean, she's to a total be. badass when she shows up at the end. Yeah. Um, and she obviously is necessary to save the day at the beginning and bring Tony back. Mm-hmm. Um, e- yeah, I mean, I really like the moments she's there. I think they could have maybe done a little better with the whole idea, which I totally understand as her character. There are a lot of other planets out there that need help. Then they don't all have the Avengers. Right. So she's out there helping a lot of planets, which cool. If yeah. we get another movie of her like on another planet helping another like world of people... I will be there first day to see it. But something about it, like no one ever challenged her on it a little bit. I just feel like I've always kind of felt this way about Captain Marvel. I just don't know if her character is as fully formed through one movie and then the few scenes here. I liked some of the dynamic. Like I thought the challenge in the in the teaser trailer where Thor's like, I like this mm-hmm. one. That's like the best moment she has with any other Avenger outside of like the Spider-Man moment. I, I mean, that moment where all the ladies team up. That's different. That's, that's fucking badass. I thought it was a little on the nose, but. Still badass. Super badass. And yeah. references, well, especially I Especially because you're just like, there's so there's, many. There's they're still, there's more. There's still more. And they <laughs> cut to DC and it's just Wonder Woman with like crickets <laughs> happening. Yeah. She's like, I wish I had friends. I've got this. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, I think. Her moments that she has in the movie are great. I, thought, I seeing uh, uh, Nick Fury dead on the screen, you can see that motivates her, yes. which I thought that was a nice little like nod to their relationship. Well, and one thing I think they can explore a little bit more because I think it's it's not as in your face. But one of the things I like most about her character is that the moment she realizes she has this like unlimited source of power and that she has this ability, her immediate instinct is just, oh, I'm going to go help everyone. Yeah. Whereas a lot of other heroes, they struggle with like, well, do I want to live my normal life or do mm-hmm. I want to be a hero? Or like, I'm afraid I might use it for bad. What if I do this? Her only instinct is to use it for good. Yeah. Which is, I think, like interesting in a different way. No, for sure. I think we try to make a lot of our more modern superheroes complicated and they have issues that keep them from being the hero they need to be. Mm-hmm. But for someone to kind of forego a normal life and only worry about helping people... I think it's also a very interesting choice. Well, I like that. It's kind of like taking the the concept of what Captain America is, and he's like fighting for the the American good and mm-hmm. like of people, and he's very just like all proud and valor and all this other shit. But like he struggles a little bit because you know his life was taken from him and yada yada yada. Yeah. Which let's go ahead and get into Captain America then. It, just to America's that, ass. Yeah. <laughs> just to finish that thought. I could do this all day. Captain Marvel is like the like that but for the universe kind mm, of like, yes instead of just like america it's everyone right um captain america i really like what they did with him mm-hmm. and i feel like he was someone that i really didn't care too much about until they started making him more of like the leader i was a little bummed in infinity war that he didn't do more mm. like he he did but like in this i was like that's Captain America. He's being a he's being the guy yeah. with the shield and doing cool shit in infinity of- war he was very focused on like helping like vision get to Wakanda and yeah. he was like you guys handle this I'm gonna go do this and get this guy to help no I think it was like they did fan service and they did it without being cheesy and like forcing it it nailed it and I don't know I thought him fighting himself and being like <laughs> do this all day. like I know like yeah okay <laughs> oh no My, the best moment of him being in the past is the hail hydra moment is, isn't that me and that's <laughs> So fucking badass. I do have a question. Yeah. Why did he need the spear? What do you mean? Why did they need the spear? That's what he got from the briefcase. Wasn't the one of the stones on that? But isn't the Tesseract? I don't remember. That's where I'm like, because I thought the, the stone, this is us being dumb, but I thought the Tesseract was the stone. And his saber, I thought maybe at one point became together. I think... I was confused about that in the past, and then in this movie, I just accepted as they need them both. Like they because they made it clear that they wanted to get them both. I was like, 
they need them both. But I didn't think about it too hard. Yeah, because there's two blue things. And I was like, yeah. where's the other? I don't understand. That's fair. That's yeah. a fair confusion. Because I do think back in the original Avengers, Loki and the Tesseract and all that stuff did seem like it was very tied in with the scepter. And yeah. I don't know. Oh, whatever. They, but yeah, I think that for me, calling back the scene with him in the elevator from, I think it's from uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah, it is. Uh, when he goes and just kicks all the ass. <laughs> And the, the American ass. Yes, all that American ass. <laughs> it, like, it's calling back to that, so you're waiting for that to happen. Because mm -hmm. he's like, I've seen him in an elevator with a bunch of guys, he's and gonna he beats them all up. But in this one, he uses his brain, not his brawn. Oh. And he realizes, he's like, oh, well, and I already know all of these guys are secret Hydra. Mm -hmm. Like, if they think I'm secret Hydra, then, they'll give me the thing. Then it's going to be like, oh, fuck, we are Deeper than yeah. we're the best Nazis. It's also great because in the comics, there's a certain point where Captain America became a secret Hydra agent. Yeah. And so it kind of also calls back to that. It's so good. And then to, uh, another layer on the Captain America cake is no, we're eating cake. We're eating the, the American ass cake. <laughs> <laughs> what? Eat, eat that American. Eat that. Jelly. Um, when he shows up and sees his other self. The other self's first thought is, I have Loki here. And it's like, yeah, of course that's what he thinks. Yep. And I'm like, that's so good. It got it. It is so good. And so uh, rounding it out, let's just kind of talk about uh, Iron Man. We're going to forget some Avengers because there's so many. There's like so Scarlet many. Witch fucking Bad almost ass. kills Thanos by herself. Badass scene. He threatens, he almost murders his entire army just because she almost beats him. Yeah, because he's rain down fire. Yeah, whatever. Dude, it's. That I think there's just a, there's a couple of things. Obviously, talking about Iron Man, I want to get into. I am Iron Man. Iron Man's badass. I, I think yeah. he is. This is such a good. He obviously dies. He makes his own little like Infinity Gauntlet stone, which is also like cool technology. I guess it's a good. Uh, <laughs> it's a good backup plan. Yeah, and the, he's the one that snaps and dusts Thanos. I just thought the way they did that was very emotional. Watching Pepper Potts like hold back tears and seeing the reaction with Spider-Man as he goes. And, it, and the cool thing is there is this ability for him to be like a hologram in the future and like flashback. I don't want that though. I, I want don't. like, I think I'm happy with how it ended. Mm -hmm. Like I think getting that hologram of him at the end is good. Uh, I think we could always have like in a future movie, like pepper or happy or somebody like watching that hologram again is like i miss him so i'm gonna keep watching this mm -hmm. um but yeah i'm kind of cool with robert downey jr being done and maybe he left a sort of like iron man bat cave why are all the gorgeous ones homicidal maniacs i know um <laughs> uh to the avengers like maybe he has like there's another bat cave somewhere there's another avengers headquarters somewhere that he's been planning on if something went wrong I have a backup plan for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I well, think that's what will lead to, there'll be another Iron Man in the future. There'll well, be- Whether it's Pepper Potts putting, like they, there's a storyline or a comic series called Rescue. I don't know if that's what they're calling her mm, version of Iron right. Man because Rescue was more of a, like I would go rescue people and not kill people and fight as much. But Well, and also uh, I think Pepper Potts needed the Iron Man suit kind of like uh, Rhodes does. Mm -hmm. I think she gets injured in the comics oh. and she needs the Iron Man suit to help her like walk. Live. And stuff. So yeah, I think they didn't go that route necessarily. Which is but. nice. Um, I, Yeah, I just think he his storyline, it was a, it felt like such a good wrap up and how cool that they ended with uh, Iron Man. Like, oh, that was so Powerful good. and just like, fuck, that's the end of the first movie mm -hmm. and now it's the end of this saga it's so good did you cry uh you know what i was going in it into it I, i'm a i'm a softy i was going into it expecting to cry a couple of times and i i i think i only teared up like here and there and some of the tear up was more just like because it was emotionally exciting mm -hmm. i honestly kind of teared up during that fight with mjolnir and like Thor seeing that like that gave me chills and made me emotional. I didn't. <laughs> I kept doing. You said you were doing this like, yeah, thing, yeah. <laughs> there was like three actions I kept doing that I was like, this is the weirdest. If somebody's <laughs> filming me right now, I'm sorry. But I did a couple times. Where I was like, yeah. You kept clapping, like I clap, but just like once or twice, like little, yes, little, little close ones. And then I would like slap my leg, <laughs> like yes. <laughs> and then there was a few times when I literally like turned to someone and was like, yeah. You gave a thumbs, thumbs up, up to the Star Wars so guy, <laughs> but it was. Those are my three actions. Uh, I, what got you? What like besides that moment? Was there any other like teary eyed, watery I, eyes? You know, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't too sad um, with 
like I wasn't sad during the Black Widow scene or anything like that. I, I that was th- more like it. Like I felt no one in the theater was breathing. They all yeah. just like. <gasps> no, I don't think I. I don't think I got too teary up, and that was something that made me question as I leave the movie. I was like, "What about me right now?" Or what about it? Because I've cried in other movies. Like, yeah. and I, I don't know. I you want to know what moment got me? Huh? It. I don't know why it got me, but I think it was maybe the the acting was very good, and it just happened like close enough to an emotional moment that it got me teary-eyed was when Peter hugs his friend. Oh, yes. In the hallway. Which also makes me ask, ask a lot of questions, which... Yeah, like, was he just dead? Was he dead the whole yeah, time? Like, did he just come back? Why are they still in high school? It's been five years. So wouldn't Ned be in college then? He Maybe he got snapped. So, so then they got snapped, but didn't Peter be like, I was dusted and then now I'm back and it was just like a couple of minutes. I don't know what's going on. Mm. So you got... You got sad because you hadn't seen your friend in a couple of minutes. I get that, you know, yeah. the last time he saw Parker was in the school bus and he's yeah. like zipping off. So he's like, yay, my friend's still alive. Spider-Man's still here. So I think their dynamic is great. I yeah. I and that's wait. what got me is like, one, it was like just after the Tony Stark stuff. So mm-hmm. you could see that like in Spider-Man's face, like Peter Parker was still real sad. Uh-huh. But then he sees his friend and his friend is almost crying and like here's how, and they give him each other a big old hug. Tom and like Holland, that one got me. He's a gem, and I think the the Infinity War when he was feeling he was about to be dusted, that got me. Oh yeah, there wasn't anything like that in this movie. Um, I think part of it is just because his delivery of the line. He's a child. He's scared. He's like, yeah. I, I didn't. Feel I mean, the closest that. to that is like you have when he comes back and yeah. him and Tony hug. Yeah, and I was more just like, look, yeah, Spider Man's yeah. back. He can do insta kill stuff. Well, especially because like. Uh, when Tony goes to hug him and he's like, oh, this is this is happening. <laughs> he's right. like, oh, okay. <laughs> As everything's fucking <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, obviously, there's so many good moments with all the characters. Mm-hmm. The the running of the literal gauntlet through the battlefield mm-hmm. when they're, like, throwing the thing around trying well, to get yeah, into the Because especially van. first, like, you give it to Hawkeye? Yeah. The like, least powerful yeah. person out here right now. Yeah. Why is he the one who's supposed to get it as far away he's as possible? He's a man with great accuracy. Give it to someone who can fly. Yeah. Like, even when they gave it to Captain Marvel, I was like, she could go up. Yeah. Why did, <laughs> like, and that's what I thought she was going to do. I thought she was going to, like, just take it fucking to space. just get out of there. Yeah. And, like, yeah, the that's, fear is Thanos and... Yeah, I and mean, it's like to be like obviously these movies have to have you suspend disbelief in certain moments to like make it emotionally satisfying in mm-hmm. a good movie. But there's something some of those moments where I'm like, okay, I I love this moment of like all the women helping her get through the battlefield, but she also just flew through that spaceship. She doesn't need that. Yeah, I get the team up like we're all here for you. I thought it was super powerful, cheesy, yes, <laughs> but it, it, it's also like fucking dope like what a cool thing that they've created that it's like not one not 10 20 <laughs> 40 like how many do we have all of the women's where's the pegasus come from it's from the valkyrie do they just have that on new asgard is it just like in the little like <laughs> like ranch dr strange made all this happen man that's true he's he just like give me a horse <laughs> right he just <laughs> that would be super dope um i do want to talk about something all right this is maybe not a big conversation because uh, to follow the lines of Looper, if you talk about time travel, oh. you go crazy. And they even address that in this movie Which, where they like bring up a bunch of other movies that have done time travel and they're like, no, none of them get it right. And, and they're not even necessarily saying like we get it right. Yeah. But they're saying that there is no way to get it right. I think it makes it, I appreciate their tip of the hat to like. Time travel is fucking stupid, but the only you way- can't think about it too much. We're going to make it work is this. I do have one question for you. Okay. Time travel, all this shit happens. Mm-hmm. So let's just say we are on the, the what would it be? 2024, 2023, the five years later. Yeah. So we're in 2023. Mm-hmm. Thanos mm-hmm. leaves the dimension mm-hmm. and comes into the 2023, mm-hmm. leaving the past, which was 2014. Right. If he leaves 2014 into 2023 mm-hmm. and dies, yeah. then how on earth is the past ever lead to him ever getting the stones and ever snapping? Because he just left the past, died, so then would none of it ever happen? I think you're getting into that paradoxical and- thing, but I think a lot of that is they try to explain in the scene with uh, Tilda Swinton. Because basically she's saying, because she is very aware of all these time streams happening. Yes. yes. So she realizes what's happening and she's like, oh, well, that would break everything. Mm -hmm. And so she tells them, like, as long as you get the stones back to where they were, 
everything will happen as it has happened. But she even but, alludes, I don't remember her line, but she alludes to something that I pinged on when she was talking where I was like, oh, she is living in this like slightly different timeline but she knows that they are also in a slightly different timeline. And she, cause she's talking about like her world versus their world. Correct. And so I think we, yes, I think this movie kind of undoes certain things from other, uh, Marvel properties through the years. Uh -huh. Agent Carter being a big one. <laughs> yep. Uh, that TV show kind of now just doesn't right have like, or it, yeah, it, again, I think the time travel aspect of this is it all happened. Okay. But this is where it ends. Like, because this, like, it happened, but then now it doesn't necessarily, like, in a different timeline doesn't happen the exact same way. My brain just inverted. Oh, yeah, and that's, again, it, why if you think too hard about any time travel movie, it doesn't make sense. One of uh, a, a great movie, which I think I was thinking about during this movie, which is weird because they're very different, but uh, is about time. Mm -hmm. It's like a romantic comedy set with some time travel aspects. Oh, you're going to bring McConaughey in and talk about Time being a flat circle. No. <laughs> uh, it's about time, which if you haven't seen it, it's good. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. But it's got uh, Donald Gleason in it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this basically this dad sits his son down one day and says, hey, uh, just a small thing in our family. Uh, the men can time travel. It's no big deal. Oh, I've heard about yeah, this you now. Just, you just go in the closet. You think about a time and boom, you're there and you start over. And we see most of this movie through Donald Gleason's character's timeline and we see him go back to like oh I messed things up with that girl I'm gonna go back 10 minutes and make it right or like oh I'm gonna go back three years because this horrible thing led to this horrible thing or that but also in that movie his dad can time travel and we allude to the fact that they are both doing this during the movie and if you think about that for more than a minute it breaks it breaks because you're like wait if he's well, whose timeline are we in? Yeah, because if he if he if he did that, then would he have ever met the wife to have the baby that's also now time traveling? Yeah, because it's this, a lot. This is the whole like if you go back far enough in a race, what happens? You start to disappear. And I wish they they very clearly state in this movie, and they have a very good moment that shows that it doesn't happen is when Nebula kills Nebula, and doesn't go. Poof. Yeah. That, like yeah. Nebula kills past Nebula and doesn't disappear. That's a good point. And that I don't understand the exact physics that don't really exist, don't exist. <laughs> but only Tony Stark. Does. That's a good point. I, I do. I um, do acknowledge yeah. that. So that makes sense a little bit. Um, that's all I really care about time travel. Where'd Gamora go? Like, did she just run away? I, I don't know. Panda Express. That's the one thing I, I did have an open question about at the end of the film, which didn't like make it worse for me or anything, but they bring like past Gamora back or to the future mm -hmm. to help them fight. And then she sees star Lord again. And she's like with all her friends, she's kind of like jump started that I'm going to be a good person timeline. Cause Nebula talks to her about the, she becomes a good person and they become sisters. Yeah. 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 And she's on board with that. Yep. But then we don't see her after the battle. Mm -hmm. And then we see like all the guardians at the funeral and then we see them on the ship and she's not with them. And there's actually a screen of, uh, Star Lord's looking and it says searching. Right. Like he's searching for her. So like did she go back to her time? No, no, I don't think anyone went back did she to she take the off? Time. I think she just went to Chipotle or Panda Express <laughs> and she's hungry. Like that was a big battle. It's a lot of That's, effort. Yeah, to be fair, you'd be like, wait, ah, oh, damn it. Where is Gamora? <laughs> like, yeah, it's pretty funny that that like happened that quickly, but say la vie. You know, I think that sets up uh as Guardians of the Galaxy 3 mm -hmm. because they're going to be going searching for her. Yeah. And then there could be this dynamic where she actually romantically falls in love with Thor instead of <laughs> Star-Lord. And he's going to be like, be no, funny. no, 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 we we, yeah. we are together. And Star-Lord now, or uh, Thor not drinking yeah. now will be all fit again. And she'll be like, these muscles. And they'll <laughs> be like, what are you doing? It's like, we never done yeah. anything. And then everyone explains that uh, everything bad happened because of Peter Quill. And she'll be like, yeah, no, I'm not choosing you. You're dumb. <laughs> so you're the worst. I think they're going to be hijinks. A bit yeah. Ooh, string. hijinks. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm ready for hijinks. Man, I think we could talk like another two hours. I think oh, yeah, the, go, is... go see the fucking movie. If you, if you watched all of this and haven't seen the movie, I'm <laughs> sorry we talked about it so randomly, but also spoiled no every one, detail. No one's done that. No. The, there is no way. Jelly. That's true. There is a lot of jelly in this movie. God, he is a thick daddy. <laughs> jelly. <laughs> I could do this all day. Oh my God. Him up and drop. Why do you not like the X-Men theme? I love the X-Men theme. The X-Men are in this movie. I, I bet that boy. Stick. 
He's not going to be Wolverine. No. I oh, Dude, I can't wait till they throw like Fantastic Four and they have like, like old Captain America is going to see like a photo. We didn't even talk about old Captain America. He just sat on a bench. He's old. He looked good. He looked good. Like as an old man. Yeah. Like he had the eyes. Yeah. And he looked like a good old man. Dude, it's going to be so good. The future is great. I'm so stoked. That's a very optimistic way to end this episode. I'm so, I'm so stoked. All all the people who literally got dusted and they're like, my best friend just got dusted. Gotta go find a new best friend. And then all of a sudden they come back and it's like, well, this is my new best friend. Yeah. I well, got remarried. But like, wh- why are you here? Like, what are you doing? Oh no, I have two wives. We Literally, we moved away. See, that, there's gonna be just hijinks. Somebody's gonna <laughs> undust in the side of somebody else's apartment. Oh God! You're like, hey, like I, I live here now. What if they undust? What if I'm in the spot where someone dusted, <laughs> and then, oh, would they? My, my skin feels tight. Would they go inside me? Yeah. You put your hands on your head. <laughs> Only hearing just the start is really sad. Yeah, I want the chorus. Chorus. Wait for it. I'm a snake, but now I'm a snake that turns into butterflies. You'll never be like another guy. Taylor Swift featuring Tom DeLonge. (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) Whatever. You and me. We're gonna be a fantasy. (laughs) Put on your pants, take them off, run in the car. It's soft. I'm sad. You're mad. We're so fucking bad. I love you. You hate me. <laughs> me, me. Nailed it. Miss you, miss you. Oh, you're the you're the Mark Hoppus yeah. to my Tom DeLong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>